so I did this example in class, but I wanted to just go over it again because I was sort of making it up on the fly. Um, let's just insert a bunch of rows here. Okay, so um, uh, we have, we want to calculate a stock's beta. Now, I told you there was a bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, in this example, we are going to have different probabilities of different states of the world. We're going to have some return on the market and then some return for stocks A, B, and however many other stocks. So each stock has its own beta. That is something you need to know. And um, the beta gives us a measure of how volatile a stock is compared to the market. Uh, so the formula for beta I don't know why it wrapped text is going to be the excess return I'm sorry I'm looking at the completely wrong part of the equation uh, the covariance of the stock and the market divided by, eh, we'll do it up here, divided by the variance of the market. So in order to, and I'll spell formula correctly, in order to calculate this, we need the covariance of the stock and the, compared to the market and the variance of the market. To get that, we need to start with the expected returns. And we are going to use some product If you lock the probabilities, then you don't have to copy this. Oops. If you lock the probabilities, you only have to do this once. Deviation from mean is going to be this minus that. And if you lock the row, you don't have to type the formula again. Okay, and now let's do the variance covariance. The variance is going to be the deviation from the mean squared. And let me just add a row so we know what we're talking about. Okay, so this is the market. This is stock A and stock B. So I'm going to calculate the covariance here. So this will be the market variance. This will be stock A covariance with the market. And this will be stock B covariance again with the market. So let me wrap the text. If we were to do this slightly differently, if we did like, we could, we could calculate the variance of stock A. We don't need that to calculate beta. So this is going to be deviation from the mean of the market because it's covariance between the market and stock A, so deviation from the mean. We're going to do the same thing here, market deviation from the mean times the deviation from the mean for stock B. And we are going to copy and paste those down. The last thing is to calculate the total for each of those. So um, we're going to do the sum product again. We're going to lock that. And the last is to calculate the betas. So the beta for stock A is going to be the covariance of stock A in the market divided by the variance for the market. I'm going to make this a number. And the same thing here, the covariance divided by the variance. Now this is the exact same answer that we got in class, but let me give you some intuition on this. Let's highlight that in an interesting color. Uh, stock A, so here's the market. Stock A has virtually no relationship to the market. So it makes 3% in one state of the market, 4%, 5%, 2%. Really doesn't make any sense. 
Stock B, on the other hand, is more volatile than the market. So it does 35% when the market does 20, it does minus 25 when the market does minus 20, and therefore the beta is much higher. So a beta of one, so for instance, let's just pretend that we had the exact same makeup as the market. Notice the beta is one. That's because it moves exactly in time with the market. This stock, on the other hand, has a beta of almost zero. Like, you almost never see a beta this small. And the reason for this is that it makes the same return every single, uh, in every single market, more or less. Uh, and so the answer here is that the beta is so low because it has no relation to the market. This is not a real stock. Stock A would probably not exist. Stock B is much more likely to exist. So what I want you to get from this is the formula for beta is the covariance of the stock and the market divided by the variance for the market. This is in your notes, uh, it's in the slides, and when you have probabilities of different states of the world occurring, then that will affect the beta, and this is the um, procedure in which you need to follow in order to get the beta. Hope that helps.